Hello, Mr. Malo here, your online math teacher, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be continuing my video series on one variable data graphs. So, if you find this video helpful, consider hitting like and subscribing, and let's go. In particular, today I want to compare stem plots to split stem plots. So if you don't know what a stem plot is, go watch my video on stem plots first, then come back here. But, if you do, what does it mean to have a split stem plot? Well, we have a stem plot here, and when we look at it, one thing you might want to do is describe the shape of a distribution. And when you look at this, you might be inclined to say it looks fairly symmetric if you were to tilt your head on the side and look at it. But sometimes this isn't the best measurement. When too much of your data falls into too few of your stems, you can not really see the picture as well within a split stem plot. This is kind of the idea if you know what a histogram is with changing your bins. So splitting your stems for a stem plot is, an, is analogous to changing bin size, making them smaller, if you will, if you are building histograms. So what we need to do if we want to make a split stem plot is start off just like before. We need to draw our little line, and I like making a T, although you really only need this vertical line here. But now, instead of each stem appearing once, each stem is going to appear twice. So zero is there twice. One is there twice. Two and three, and I'm gonna make this a little longer. So when we have a split stem plot, we're going to have two stems M's each. Now for the leaves, we need to come up with a rule for how we're going to decide which stem they go with. And here's the rule. We want an equal number of leaves to potentially go to each stem. So leaves that are zero, one, two, three, or four will go with your first stem. And five, six, seven, eight, and nine will go with the second stem. That means there's five potential types of leaves that will go along with each stem. So if I need to do that with zero, I don't have any leaves from zero to four, only from um, five to nine, so that seven, eight, and eight are going to go with the second stem because these leaves fall between five and nine. Well, one's a different case. My one stems, I do have numbers between zero and four. In fact, I have two, 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 and four. So the first stem is going to get two, 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 and four. And then my leaves, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in this case, five, seven, eight, they are going to go with the second one stem. So five, seven, eight. And this is how you continue to split your data for each each pair of stems now. So three, three, nine, the threes will go with the first stem, the nine will go with the second stem. I don't have any leaves with between zero and four for the three stem, but I do have a leaf at seven, so it's gonna go here. And this is now my picture. Now, I do need to make sure I include a key, so and I can have the same key as before, even though it's a split stem diagram now, I can say, uh, maybe I'm gonna go three slash one this time. Your number doesn't matter. And that would mean 31 pairs of shoes in this data set. Now, the key is you split your stems based on the leave numbers, but we still keep many of our requirements from our original stem plot. The leaves go from smallest to largest away from the stems. Our leaves must be, and our numbers must be equal size and evenly spaced out just like before. And I need that key just like I mentioned before. So these are the features that don't really change. The only difference is I've split my stems and I've sorted my leaves between the two stems in a way that gives me a better view of the picture. Because now when I look at the split stem plot, I see I have a tail forming towards the higher numbers. So this is actually a right, a slightly right skewed shape. It's not symmetric like you might have picked from the original stem plot. And to see that, you can 
turn, tilt your head to the side to be able to see that tail forming there. So the advantage of split stem plots, it gives you a better or way to view the shape of your distribution. Just like stem plots, they're still not good for big data sets, but if you have smaller data sets like under 100, they're fine. And you can still see all your individual values, which is great too. I hope that, but that's really the main advantage of split stem plots. It lets you see the shape a little bit better by splitting up the data. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and have an awesome day.